interview the new CEO of East and Central Africa's largest company, Safaricom. That's Peter Ndegwa there, sir. If you can hear us, welcome to Sunday Live. Good to see you. Nice to see you, uh, Jeff, and thank you for welcoming me. Okay, so, so real quick, you've been on the job now, what, 19 days, less than three weeks, and you've literally hit the ground running, baptism by fire, you call it, any phrase you want, you call it. But my first question will be, have you been to Safaricom headquarters or are you working from home? Uh, Jeff, uh, it, uh, yeah, I have joined in interesting times uh, at this stage and, and I have to say uh, that uh, it is really uh, interesting. I can hear an echo, Jeff. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you very well. You keep going. Forget about the echo. Just keep going, sir. Okay. Yes, uh, Jeff, um, uh, as you know, uh, you're, you're broadcasting from my house, uh, which is where I've been working from. Uh, but yes, I have been uh, to Safaricom uh, house. Uh, I have joined uh, in interesting times, uh, but uh, interesting times call for, for big leadership, uh, Jeff. Mm, absolutely. Peter, Victoria here. Um, how does it feel? You're the first Kenyan CEO hmm. of Safaricom. We saw your past two predecessors almost create personas outside of the CEO office and becoming, for lack of a better term, the people's CEO. <laughs> Do you feel the need to create a persona of your own like they did? Uh, thank you, Victoria. I, I, I think the first thing that I'll, st I'll start by saying is I want to pay tribute uh, to, to my predecessors, both Michael, uh, who was the first CEO, uh, but also the, the late Bob for steering this company to what it is today, uh, which is the, the biggest and the most successful business uh, in Eastern Africa. And, and actually, as you know, uh, Safaricom is a, is a real pride uh, for this country and a source of uh, pride for this country. So for me, I am delighted uh, to be the first Kenyan to be uh, the CEO of uh, Safaricom. Uh, I will be my own uh, person, uh, Victoria. Uh, I, I, I know that uh, Safaricom has uh, been successful because of the support that we have had from Kenyans uh, over the years. I have uh, grown up in this country. I was born in this country. I, I, I schooled in this country. I understand uh, what ordinary people uh, of, of this country goes, go through. Uh, and, and for me, I, uh, my commitment is to, to serve uh, to build on the, uh, the legacy that uh, both Michael and uh, Bob have left to take this business uh, to the next stage. But the most important thing is for me to serve Kenyans. This business, this DNA, is about serving Kenyans, uh, Victoria. Absolutely, Peter. And you say it's about serving Kenyans, and you come at a time where it's an unprecedented time, like you said yourself. Uh, with your employees at Safaricom, uh, uh, has employed what maybe 3500 maybe more workers how many of that what percentage of that are working from home right now how many are in the office what's that like what's the news scenario like if you will so jeff uh, one of the things that that we have done at safaricom we recognize that we are offering uh, an essential service to this country uh, which is about uh, keeping the country connected and therefore, the first thing we have done is to ensure that our employees can be able uh, to keep uh, our, our network going, uh, both, both, on, both on the voice uh, data, but also on, on M-Pesa. And therefore, we have enabled all our employees to have the capacity to work from home. Today, 70% of our employees are able to work from home. The rest uh, are working uh, because we need to keep our shops open. Most of our shops are open across, across the country. We have our technology and IT teams uh, who are uh, maintaining our network uh, to keep serving Kenyans and also our customers uh, and, and ensuring that we continue to, uh, to uh, obey the rules that the government has set in terms of uh, uh, PPEs uh, 
uh, and uh, social distancing and, and ensuring that our customers are served. But today, uh, Jeff, 70% of our employees can, can easily work from home yeah. and we have contingency plans in case we need to make any more of our employees work from home. But we'll keep uh, the lights on, uh, so to say, uh, to ensure that Ke Kenyans uh, 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 are connected through through this crisis. Mm. And, and Peter, speaking of keeping Kenyans connected, there's a huge surge and need for data and home fiber because a lot of people are at home. How is Safaricom handling that building demand? And also, I can see concerns from Kenyans saying the cost of data as well. How are you managing that too? So Victoria, one of the elements that we have uh, really shifted uh, since the crisis uh, emerged is to ensure that we can support our customers uh, uh, to, to get through this crisis. Uh, and one of the big things we, 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 we have done is to ensure that as people start to work and also learn from home, uh, we, we, we have doubled capacity uh, on, uh, on fiber at home, but also fiber to business. Uh, and we have seen significant uptick of, uh, of, uh, of that service. Uh, we have seen significant demand uh, of connections or demand for connections. Uh, and I know that we have had some challenges uh, given the level of demand as we have adjusted. So, however, we have been able to stabilize that and, and I would ask our, our customers to bear with us uh, as we make sure that uh, we, we ensure that our service is, is at its best. The second, the second Victoria that we are doing is to make sure that uh, we, we give uh, uh, concessionary uh, rates to, uh, to ensure that uh, our, our students can, can continue to learn. Uh, we've given, uh, uh, we have zero rated, uh, cont uh, we have zero rated websites that give content uh, to, to students, both for primary and secondary schools, uh, so that they can access uh, content and also uh, revise uh, for exams. So therefore, we have actually reduced uh, the cost of data since uh, the crisis emerged. And this is not just uh, uh, for our uh, fiber uh, business, but also for, for our um, uh, mobile business. Peter, let me ask you about the call center that you have. I uh, read somewhere that you're receiving something like 20,000 calls every day uh, via the number star 719 hash. And it's just not the call center. You have actually doctors on standby for the questions that Kenyans are asking. Talk to us about that. Yes, Jeff, that is true. Uh, we are working and we've been uh, partnering with the, with the government, in particular the Ministry uh, of Health, uh, in this initiative to ensure that we educate Kenyans uh, about how to stay safe and, uh, and ensure that uh, we, keep, uh, we keep the country going in that respect. So we've set up uh, 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 the 719 number, which is uh, a free, uh, free line and also set up a 300 strong uh, call center, uh, including 20 professional doctors uh, that are receiving uh, up to 20,000 calls every day uh, to, from Kenyans uh, calling to, 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 to to talk about uh, the issues they are, they, they, they are experiencing, asking questions about uh, corona, uh, and, and also those who are interested in uh, contacting uh, hospitals. So, so yes, Jeff, we, we've uh, really partnered with government on this to make sure that uh, uh, the call center supports the country during this time. And, and this is a big uh, partnership between us and, and the Ministry of, uh, uh, of Health. Mm. Peter, you're taking the helm at Safaricom at a very difficult time. COVID-19 was an emergency, a crisis that we never saw coming. And to be honest, no one was ready for. Um, coming in at this time, what are your priorities for Safaricom? And navigating this very unprecedented, uncharted time, where do you see the company going? And, and what are your key priorities moving forward? So Victoria, one, one of uh, our big priorities at this stage is to make sure that uh, we ensure that Kenyans go through this crisis. Uh, we, we, we enable our customers uh, go through this crisis and we reduce the impact 
that uh, Kenyans are facing. So in terms of uh, support, uh, I have said we are supporting uh, our customers uh, by providing uh, the capacity to work from home and also learn from home. Uh, on the M-Pesa side, uh, we have zero rated uh, uh, any uh, any uh, transactions below a thousand, so anyone who's transferring money below a thousand, uh, we have uh, zero rated that. That is uh, costing us about five and a half billion uh, Kenya shillings uh, over the next three months. Uh, and we are committed to make sure we support the country on, on that respect. So, so Victoria, the, the key is to support our customers uh, to get through this, this crisis by supporting them on the, both the GSM but also uh, M-PESA uh, to ensure that uh, we support our community. We have, uh, we have uh, committed 200 million uh, Kenya shillings to uh, the food initiative that the government has uh, come up with. Uh, you know that we, uh, the government, uh, through the president, has set up the COVID em emergency uh, 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 fund, uh, and we have committed 200 million shillings. Uh, and we will use M-Pesa and partner with government to ensure that the money uh, goes to the right people. We've also launched uh, what we are calling Bonga for Good, uh, which is uh, a, a, an initiative for our customers uh, to reward, uh, to, to transfer uh, their, their points which they have accumulated over the years uh, to, to, to people who, who are needy and who want food and who can uh, redeem that uh, uh, th th those points at uh, uh, Lipana and Pesa merchants across across the country. So our first priority uh, this at this time is actually to ensure that our customers, our community, and uh, uh, and, our, and our country gets through this crisis. And the second the second is also to think about when this crisis is over. Of course, we need to enable the country to come back. Uh, we are thinking, and, uh, and I'm getting through uh, my, uh, my onboarding session, uh, we know that this, can, this company, Safaricom, has been very successful, but we have been very successful because Kenya uh, has supported us, the Kenyans have supported us. So it is ensuring that we get our Kenyans through this crisis, that then we can build the future of Safaricom. For me, uh, Safaricom has been known for technology and for innovation, I, uh, and also for the DNA of serving this community, okay, the Kenyan, the Kenyan population. That's one of the DNA that I'll continue to, uh, to drive going forward. I know that uh, the traditional sources, some of the traditional sources of growth uh, for the company have started to plateau like voice and SMS. However, there is significant opportunity for data uh, and I believe that we can innovate uh, uh, through technology and our innovation to ensure that data is more accessible, uh, the handsets are more accessible, that uh, education is more accessible, and other, and other aspects of, of, uh, of uh, issues within the country like uh, health and, 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 uh, and agriculture as more accept, as accessible. The key is for us to innovate so that uh, we empower uh, people uh, to, 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 to have a better life uh, in this country. There is significant opportunity also to look at uh, uh, other, other areas uh, of growth, uh, Victoria, including uh, potential uh, uh, expansion beyond, beyond this country, but the headroom for growth in this country through innovation, uh, and in particular through digital. Uh, on, on both at a personal but also in business is significant. All right, Peter, uh, for those who don't know your background, real quick, you were MD of Diageo in Eastern Europe, Russia, North Africa. Before that, you were MD in Ghana and Nigeria. So if I could ask you a, a kind of an unfair question, selling alcohol is very different from selling bundles or data. <laughs> Kenyans are not too picky about alcohol, but they're very picky about data. Yes, Jeff. Uh, for me, I, I do agree the sectors are very different. Uh, so I, I have come from a, a consumer goods business that was selling uh, drinks. I'm, I'm coming into a consumer business that sells voice, data, uh, and financial services. The key for me, though, uh, Jeff, is they are all consumers. It is about understanding 
uh, customers understanding their needs. But more importantly, uh, Jeff, is about ensuring that we, we stay to the DNA of what Safaricom is. Mm. Uh, which is ensuring that uh, we improve the, life, the lives of, of Kenyans. So selling data, we have to make sure that uh, data is accessible. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, we democratize the use of data, uh, whether that is for, for education, uh, uh, as we've seen during the, the COVID crisis, our, 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 our kids and our, our students in schools need to access data. Uh, it is my job to ensure uh, that we make data accessible. Uh, of course, uh, we need to make sure that uh, we get handsets uh, in the country uh, which uh, uh, can improve the user experience. And, and that, uh, that is uh, an agenda that we are, uh, we are going after by making sure that handsets are accessible. Uh, we'll be coming back to, to customers to say uh, that they can uh, uh, buy handsets over time and we will support them over the period. So, so Jeff, I think the key here is that uh, customers are the same. It is about understanding the needs of customers, but also for me, for Safaricom, it's understanding it's about ensuring that we improve the livelihoods of Kenyans. Mm. Peter, you know, Jeff started the last question by giving a litany of where you used to work professionally, but let me start this one by asking this. What was a personal yes. challenge you went through, maybe from your childhood, that made you the man that we see in front of us now and, and that sits at the helm of Safaricom, what informed and brought up the characteristics and principles that guide you now? Thank you, Victoria. I, I, I grew up, uh, I, was born and, uh, I was born in uh, rural Kenya, uh, in uh, a second born in, uh, in a typical uh, large, large family. So I learned very early in my life to, ha to take responsibility. Uh, I grew up at a time when uh, uh, doing the right thing, integrity was big. I, I got inspired by ordinary people, my parents, my teachers, and, and have always worked hard uh, to, to ensure that uh, I, I, I give my best to everything that I do. Uh, so, and, and I, I always aspired to do well. And um, I went, uh, I have uh, I've been lucky to get through uh, and get a great career, uh, starting with, uh, with Pricewaterhouse and, and, and also with uh, Diageo, working with some of the best companies at the highest level. But my, my principle has always to do the right thing, uh, to, to keep learning, to keep growing, to always be humble and ensure that uh, you keep learning and growing. Uh, when, you stop, when you stop learning, uh, then you don't grow anymore. Uh, so, so for me, it is about uh, keep pushing the boundaries, uh, but, be, but drive for what you believe in. Uh, and that, that's what I've always uh, been known for, and that's what I stand for. And that's what I, I, I promise to do as CEO of uh, Safaricom. Yeah, I'm sure, Peter, qualities <laughs> you learned under Jeffrey Griffin at Starehe. But let me ask you this. Where do you see Safaricom in the next three years? So, Jeff, uh, Safaricom has uh, been a very successful business. I see uh, Safaricom re-establishing the next phase of growth, uh, m -Pesa, uh, 2.0, um, we need to get uh, Safaricom to the next stage uh, in, 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 the, in the future. Safaricom will still be the biggest uh, organization in Kenya. Uh, I see Safaricom beyond Kenya and being a much more uh, African, uh, uh, African leader uh, and indeed a global leader. We need to expand our comparison uh, beyond Kenya. Uh, to ensure that uh, Safaricom's success can be, uh, can be known well beyond uh, this country. It is a source of pride uh, for this country. We are, can export uh, this pride uh, beyond, beyond Kenya. However, having said that, uh, uh, Jeff, it is also ensuring that we keep going back to the DNA of what we are to this country, which is about 
uh, improving the lives of the Kenyan people, uh, customer first to be a big uh, principle of mine, and, and the Safaricom team already know that customer experience is going to be a, a major focus for me uh, in, 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 in the coming years. So it will continue to be successful. Uh, it will be the leader uh, that, it, that it has been, but we'll get it uh, to lead well beyond this country. Yeah, Peter Negwa hitting the ground running Absolutely. and smack in the middle of the storm. All we can do is wish you luck, my Absolutely. friend. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time and all the best. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff and Victoria. Thank you. All right. Hey. That's Peter Ndegwa there, CEO of East and Central Africa's largest company, Safaricom. We're going to take a quick break. Come back. There's plenty more ahead. Keep tweeting at Koinangage. At Vicky Rubadiri.